Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, your weekly dose of knife news and information about knives and knife collecting. Here's your host, Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco. Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast. I'm Bob DeMarco. On this edition of the show, I'm speaking with fellow YouTuber and knife philosopher, Professor EDC. Professor EDC has a very unique knife channel on YouTube, which acts as two. For each knife review or philosophy talk, the professor posts two videos, one in English and one in Spanish. He and I are kindred spirits in that our tastes in knives vary greatly across a broad spectrum of types, but also in that we spend a lot of time thinking about the why of our hobby. Professor EDC has been a longtime contributor to Thursday Night Knives and is never shy about delving deeply into the topic of knives and why we're drawn to them. I look forward to reaching across the border for some profound knife talk with Professor EDC. But before we do, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and hit the notification bell, and then download the show to your favorite podcast app. And as always, if you'd like to help support the show, you can do so by going to Patreon. Quickest way to get there is go to the knifejunkie.com slash Patreon. Again, that's the knifejunkie.com slash Patreon. Don't take dull for an answer. It's the Knife Junkie's favorite sign-off phrase, and now you can get that tagline on a variety of merchandise, like a t-shirt, sweatshirt, hoodie, long-sleeve tee, and more, even on coasters, tote bags, a coffee mug, water bottle, and stickers. Let everyone know that you're a knife junkie and that you don't take dull for an answer. Get yours at thenifejunkie.com slash dull and shop for all of your Knife Junkies merchandise at thenifejunkie.com slash shop. Hey, Professor EDC. Good to have you on the show, sir. Bob, how you doing? Jim, how you doing, guys? Uh, we're doing great, man. It's very good to have you. Very good to have you with us uh, for a full hour to talk. Uh, as I mentioned up front, you and I have had many a truncated chat, uh, but uh, with lives, you know, you have a lot of other people talking. So I'm very excited to, uh, well, to talk to talk just with you. And also, I just want to mention um, that I'm really uh, impressed by how you have a knife channel that. Uh, is basically you're doubling your audience through your bilingual um, approach. Uh, how did you get started in with your knife channel and and what were your goals, your mission? Well, first of all, for me, it's it's uh, it's an honor uh, being here and and meeting you this way and and Jim. You know, I've uh, I've been following you guys for quite some time and uh, I appreciate what you guys do. Uh, the quality of uh, information that you put out, that you give us. And uh, that's something I, I truly appreciate. You know, uh, uh, good information is hard to come by. And so I just wanted to say that. And, and I'm, I'm humbled and I'm honored uh, for being here, Bob. Uh, honors mine, sir. Thank you. Um, well, it's, it's a... It's a funny thing uh, how this this all began. Yeah, it's it's bilingual. You know, I've, I've uh, kind of been criticized uh, by that. You know, saying uh, a lot of people told me that that's not gonna work. And but you know, um, I'm kind of stubborn, and I was uh, welcomed to the community by by. Uh, nice people like you and, and Nick Shabazz, um, Metal Complex, Slicey Dicey, Dirk Warning, um, but many, many guys that, uh, that I appreciate. And so, but how this all began is funny because uh, before COVID, uh, I uh, worked in different schools and uh, went to different schools to work with children um, in their orchards. So we build their orchards and, and did many things outdoors. And so I gave them uh, classes, whether you talk about math, history, language, um, ethics, it was all mixed in the orchard. This, this is from something I learned from a science I learned that's called uh, permaculture. And um, 
And so the children loved learning to work with my knives. And this is something that in the orchards, outdoors, it's, it's very normal. Here uh, in Mexico, in the urban setting, it's not very common. And so, but there's a whole uh, um, pedagogy and psychology to this. And when you teach children uh, how to use, how to appropriately use a tool, you're teaching them a whole bunch of things, starting with responsibility. And, um, and so, you know, they, they start learning how to broom. So they start with a broom, but they're also gonna use a shovel and uh, a pick and uh, scissors. And, and as they advance, um, they get to use a hatchet. They get to use a hand axe. And the final tool that they get to use is a, a folder or a, a, a Mora knife, the basic. So that they, they, we teach them, we used to teach them how to carve uh, spoons or spatulas uh, with the knives we had. And so the, the children used to watch how, how I would bring in my own tools, my own axes and because that's not something that uh, any private school here has. So I brought in my tools and the children just loved looking at the folders and the knives and the axes. And they, they proposed me, the, the channel was born because they told, they suggested, Professor, why don't you open a YouTube channel and you can teach us, you can show us your collection through the channel. And that's how it was formed. That's awesome. I love that. It, it's a, uh, you know, sometimes people, uh, well, for instance, Jim pushed me uh, in a way to do this in, in a big way. And sometimes that's all you need is just a, a little a little push in the right direction uh, or sometimes a big push. Uh, and it can start something that you had no idea uh, was going to turn out to be something that you love so much. Uh, so Absolutely. But 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 your actual your love of knives now I mean that you know the reason the reason that this has taken off for you is because there's a real passion for the knives. Where did that grow, uh, grow out of? Oof. Uh, <laughs> well, I, I've been I've done a lot of things uh, through along my life. And, and one of those things, uh, I was a, an immigrant in the States uh, at some point. I lived there for five years. That's where I picked up the language and learned about the US culture and learned to appreciate uh, that. Uh, I was also an, an immigrant um, in Spain for, for a while. And there in Spain, um, I worked as a um, assistant of a, a uh, I, I, I forgot the word, the people who cut down wood. Uh, oh, um, um, <laughs> no. yeah, yeah. A logger. Uh, yes, a logger. Well, a logger. A... So it just slipped Go. my mind. Me too. And you, you brought it up and I'm like, oh, I'll, I'll tell him what it is. And like an idiot, it's Lumberjack. Jim, Lumberjack. Just, Jim just let me know. <laughs> Thank you, Jim. So um, I worked as an assistant uh, as a Lumberjack. And um, he taught me how to prune, um, how what branches to cut, and, and when it was necessary to chop down the tree uh, with a chainsaw and with axes. And so... My love for the blades started with axes. Mm -hmm. And uh, my first collection was an axe collection, different axes. And do you still, do you still there, have those? Is it... I, have a, I have a few. Uh, I have sold most of them because um, it evolved. Came back to Mexico and, and I worked, um, had a, a, a project in, in, up in the woods uh, taking Montessori education to rural communities mm. and, um, and there, well, I kind of traded 
started trading the axes for machetes and knives. So my taste evolved into, I, I, I kept the, the, the axes for quite some time because that's also another hobby I have, uh, doing firewood. I love doing that. Um, and it, it's just relaxing and, and uh, I used to have more of a temperamental personality, you know, was more like a firecracker. And, <laughs> and so making wood uh, helped me uh, relax and, and um, strengthen my meditation practice and all. And so that, that stuck around for a while. And, but in order to open, uh, to, to gather other uh, pieces, knives and machetes, I still have a, 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 I don't know, some 20 machetes from different times. No, nice. uh, those and from England to, to the ones used, uh, I have one from the revolution here in Mexico. As, as well as a sword that is from the revolution. And that's, that's right here. It has been changed. The, the handle was broken. So this was inserted. I, I didn't buy it like this. Well, I mean, I bought it like this, mm -hmm. but uh, that's not the original handle. But you can see here, this is an original uh, sword from the Mexican revolution. Wow. Yeah, and, that uh, is that is beautiful and something like that has history to it. Uh, that's that's one of those things about about knives, about collecting knives that I think uh you know on a broader basis uh, appeals to a lot of people. <clears throat> Not only um can you collect things like that, something that is an artifact uh that has actual history to it, but all of these really high quality modern knives that we're into collecting, part of the value of them is knowing that they will last, outlast us and are considered heirloom pieces. Yes, the cheapest Chinese, I should just say, the cheapest plastic knife uh, will outlast us. But there's a good reason for something like this to out, you know, to, to be handed down. There's something to me about knives that has, uh, you know, real potential potential for self-reliance potential for you know uh historical value uh passing down um when you collect knives when you go out and acquire knives or acquire knives for your channel or think about the knives you want on your channel what are the kind of things you're looking for uh what kind of connections gimmick uh you know, I, I always separate uh, these tools into two categories. There, there's the functional side of it, functionality, which is the essence of the knife. So any knife, I at least in my view, shouldn't lose its essence. And what's it, this, the, the essence is to cut. So that's one of the things that it's uh, uh, essential for me. But the other thing is the aesthetic thing. And the aesthetic thing is, is very difficult to describe. We can go into um, philosophical points of view there. We can go into um, talk about art, uh, which it gets me in trouble all the time because I, I do have a, 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 a artistic background. And um, you know I'm always debating myself against myself. And okay. so it's a fun thing, but it, it gets me in trouble with myself. And, <laughs> but that's how I, I, I go about, um, about the things that I enjoy and knives. It's one of those things, you know, in the, in the beginning with axes, it was uh, for survival. So I learned, um, I learned an activity in order to survive, to put food on my table. And that evolved into machetes and knives, which was uh, something that um, that I was doing and that I was learning up in the mountains. And, and for a while, it remained in knives, uh, fixed blades. From the fixed blades, it evolved into folders, 
until lastly, it was the slip joints. And um, this evolution, you know, there has to be a purpose in, in most of the things I do. That's just the way I, I'm, I'm complicated. What can I say? <laughs> but uh, <laughs> there has to be a purpose. Um, perhaps it is uh, because of, of the way my cosmic vision, the way I see life, that uh, without a purpose, life is rather gloomy. And, um, and I found a purpose, and I, I, it's my task, my homework, to find a purpose in things I do. And in knives, it's no exception. So I had to find purpose and, and fusion th that purpose with blades. And that's, you know, like the path I'm walking on um, with thinking about a, a magnificent tool that has been with us for thousands of years. But not only that, because this tool um, has... And, and this tool, right, has evolved into something, um, something like this. Oh yeah. Or something like this. Okay, so you're talking about purpose, and you also stepped on the landmine of art. Now, to me, I also have an art background, and I have a um something i want to bounce off of you let's see what see what uh professor edc thinks of this uh i uh when people say that uh you know a knife is a work of art i i usually bristle and i'll allow it because i know it's just a turn of phrase mostly uh but but when i'm what i'm really thinking is no it's not it's a work of artful design because it has a purpose beyond mere appreciation of its existence it has a purpose of cutting or stabbing or whatever it's going to do but it has a it has a purpose beyond um appreciation so um you know is it is it that is it that knives contain a, a beauty and a purpose to them that reach back real deep in our human you know our human uh, identity in that sense, I, I do think so. As a tool, absolutely. And when and if we talk about craftsmanship, which is different from art, yeah, absolutely. If we stick strictly to the rules of art, then we cannot say that uh, that knives or or folders are pieces of art uh, in the most strict uh, strict. Um, um, Right. interpretation of it yeah uh, the requirements for something to become art on the other hand uh the, the mastership in craftsmanship um, can evolve to a point where it becomes art and i think that many of the custom knives and custom folders that we we are seeing nowadays and and from other times that can be, uh, you know, they, they are right there, right there in that line where they're about or, or trespassing that line from craftsmanship or master craftsmanship to art. Okay, well, I, I, I yes, I agree. I agree. I'll allow it again. You know, it's just one of these debates I have back and forth with my dad. I have to sharpen my teeth on them. Uh, every once in a while, um, I've I've come a long way from since my art school days when kind of anything goes. That's how I, that's how I was back then. Um, but with the <laughs> knives, <laughs> with the knives that you're now getting, and the knives that that are appealing to you, because there's a you know there's a reason why we select the things we select. Sometimes the reason is uh, I have a couple of people who. Um, for instance, Jack Wolf knives. I'm just a lucky man, and I get a knife from him uh, with with every release, and and I'm so grateful, and I get to experience that, and I love it. Um, the knives that I spend my money on, um, you know that that is a very specific thing. That's like I work hard, and I can't just throw money away, and 
And so there, I, I'm looking for that certain something. I don't need any thing i'm well taken care of in terms of knives but i'm still buying them. so there's there's something about that and uh and now it th there's just got to be that something special and it's hard to define i could put some parameters on it but um I, what are you looking for uh that you spend your money on that you want to keep on that row behind you that's a tough one you know um we got to talk about how we were raised. And, and in that sense, um, I always talk about taste. Uh, good taste is a thing. It's a hard thing to come by. But the great thing about that is that uh, it can be taught. You can evolve. And we, we are not born with good taste. You know, we... I, I remember uh, my parents listened to classical music and, uh, but, you know, just normal. And then one day back in the States, I, I, I whack, walked back from school uh, and, and then walked by, uh, had to go through, through some bins, garbage bins. And there lied a collection of um, classical music, do you remember this this old LPs? Yeah. Um, a collection of classical music, and and I was I was amazed that people would throw that away. So I picked them all all up, and uh, I went back home. And my mother was surprised for me to picking up um, the trash. Uh, and from there, I I became a, a great uh, fan of Edvard Grieg and Stravinsky and something that my mother would have never thought and opera. And so, but, you know, it, I don't know why it just caught my, my ear and, and uh, there was the seed that perhaps um, that my parents planted and then destiny or life uh, came across and, uh, and there was a, you know, like the seeds, the soil, the darkness necessary, the water, and then boom, it explodes. Um, and so I think of, of taste uh, in such a manner. I think uh, we plant many seeds and sometimes we forget that, that they are there, but uh, if we keep on watering and nurturing the soil, uh, soon enough, uh, we'll see sprouts and, and bigger plants and trees. Ah, oh, man, you mentioned taste and good taste. And, you know, uh, I also, my parents listened to classical music. I was just telling a friend of mine the other day that I remember vaguely my mom kind of telling my dad, you know, it's time to like start you know, elevate yourself a little, like, you know, you can still listen to rock and roll, but, you know, check out Mozart. My dad got into it and it, you know, it changed him for the better. You know, they started going to music and seeing live performances and stuff like that. It enriched their lives. I got the, I got the um, overflow of that as their children or the, the residuals as their children. But you, you mentioned taste and good taste. And that is something that uh, not particularly, I don't hear talk about that, but it seems like a, the type of thing that in the United States, in this climate right now, if you even mention the concept of taste, like something can be done in poor taste or, or, or you know, s pop culture has no taste or, or anything like that, you would be seen as elitist or some sort of ist and 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 rejected as some sort of a snot but i i i love that you bring it up taste has a lot to do with a lot you know that's that's the reason why we um turn our nose up at gas station knives for instance we have better taste than that and it i think it's a matter of accepting yourself as well i mean um, I'm old school in that sense, and and I'm happy about it. You know, uh, 
I, I keep on learning, I keep on uh, maturing uh, because it's a life process. And, um, but I also find that uh, good values, um, that good ethics lead to a happier life. And that's something that I, I see that we are forgetting, that many of us are forgetting. And, and we can see this in social media, we can see this everywhere. And, uh, and where has it uh, taken us? So uh, to the degradation of our planet, you know, uh, some people make fun of me when I mention uh, uh, ecology, when we talk about knives. Well, I'm not against China at all. I think that China has taken big steps and has learned very quickly. And that's something that uh, has to be recognized. Uh, but at the same time, when, when uh, an unknown, uh, particularly uh, Chinese company comes up um, without any name, without any um, anywhere to be found, just dropping cheap, cheap knives out there. Well, you know, it, it, it's a matter of, of course, uh, doing some research, but at the same time, just a little bit of thinking into how are these knives made? Why are they so cheap? Hmm. Uh, it's costing uh, people, people's lives. So uh, labor exploitation, exploitation. And at the same time, since the company is not being regulated, um, they're pouring out uh, contaminants because they're not regulated. And at the same time, these cheap, cheap knives, um, yeah, you can buy them and then throw them away uh, the next day if, if, because uh, they cost so cheap. And all of this is just producing uh, uh, pollution, right? And, but, you know, it's one of those things that, uh, <laughs> I'm going to sound old, but in, in the old days, <laughs> you know, um, uh, I was taught differently by my parents and by my grandparents, and uh, I value their teachings. I know that uh, uh, not always uh, they are the best or the or correct, um, but it's my job to improve upon that. Nonetheless, I, I still respect the knowledge from the past, and it's my job to up, upgrade that knowledge to the present and for my future. Well, there's, there's a reason why tradition exists. There's a reason why uh, that stuff gets passed on. You can't just wave your hand at it and say, oh, I know better than the, the last, you know, several thousand generations that came before me. Uh, you were talking about uh, kind of the, the cheap anonymous knife that we can just kind of pick up the way we kind of like pick up a, a, a McDonald's burger when we're hungry, you know, this cheap knife and we kind of use it, whatever, just want to check it out. And then we can just discard it. Um, and, and the kind of ethics behind that, do you, do you think that, uh, I think you and I are probably vaguely around the same age. I, I, I think you have a little less gray in yeah. your beard, but I think we're about the same generation. <laughs> and I think one year. Oh, okay. Difference. All right. All right. I'm All right. Old man. <laughs> <laughs> do, do you think, uh, compared to kind of the exciting onset of this modern era of knives. Do you think that the market is flooded in any way, or do you think that it's more like the more the merrier and that's bringing more, uh, more people like us into the fold? Oh man, you're going to get me hanged for this, man. <laughs> that's what we're here. Um, for. <laughs> uh, I think it's a little uh, a, a mixture of both. Um, one of the things, let me take a step back. One of the things I have learned as a YouTuber uh, or as a um, um, reviewer or critic uh, is that I don't want to be a, a critic. I want to understand. And that's a big difference in, in critiquing something. You know, we might critique something with a positive intention, with a constructive in intention, but it is very different if we try to understand before. And so I think understanding 
trying to understand the situation that we are in is um, gives us a, a, a wider, a bigger uh, point of view. And that can lead us to a smarter uh, take of uh, smarter decision taking. But well, okay. But do you think the market is flooded? Do you think? Do you think that there are? Okay. Yes. I'm not. I'm not yes. trying to put words. I'm definitely not trying to put words in your mouth. But but I, I want. No. I want to know what you think about this. This because you've you've been around like I have, and you've kind of seen this happen. And I feel like it's kind of happened all of a sudden over 12 years. You know, like all of a sudden yeah. I look around. Oh my God! There are so many knives. Like. I, I can't even I can't even keep up. Yeah, uh, a, f a friend of mine told me, "Hey, hey, that that you gotta coin that term," because at once uh, I, I I said that uh, we are living in the age of the i knives, you know, like iPhones, iPads, I watch, I knife, and so um, yeah, absolutely. Um, it is a it is a time of great opportunity for. Uh oh, I think we lost the professor. Let's see if we can get him back. The eye knife. All right, cool, cool, cool. All right, uh, so let me, let me just uh, let me just ask you. Uh, you mentioned the term eye knife, and I, I love that, but I want you to, uh, I kind of intuitively know what it is, but I want you to, to define it in clear terms. What is the eye knife? All right. Um, we live in a, in a time that there's uh, opportunities for many people. Um, let me make clear. Opportunities are not the same in the first world than in the third world. So... You know, when when I when I we gotta talk about this because that, that that's another exciting uh, topic the USA made and the China made and yeah uh, there there's yeah. something to be said there but about the eye knife um, something I respect a lot whether I like it or uh, I may like like a knife maker or not uh, is their trajectory and the time that they have spent. Uh, doing research and the time they have uh, cut themselves and burned themselves and sacrificed uh, sweat and sacrificed uh, perhaps uh, the meal of their family in order to, to achieve success. So I respect that very much. And so, uh, and I'm not going to talk bad about anyone here, but when you see um, just new knives popping everywhere, you know, like uh, like the new model, the new version of the iPhone that just uh, two weeks away, and that was yesterday. So um, that that really gets me thinking. Um, I'm not saying that they are bad. I'm saying that the technology that we have now accelerates the processes. But let's not forget about those knife makers, those people that have sacrificed a lot. We have a, a Tersola, um, we have a, a, a Hinder, a, a Chris Reeve, we have a Tomeo. You know, they have taken their time learning the uh, uh, how to make the, the know-how of, of all this. And um, technolo technology is not equivalent to wisdom. Interesting. But, okay, wait, wait. Are, are you referring specifically to... Um guys like you and I who can uh, can come up with a design and then come up with funds to create it and then have a knife created uh, like loosely. Uh, is that kind of what you're, what you're getting at? Cause uh, uh, I, I sometimes think of that and, 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 and let me just say one thing. Well, no, let me just ask you, is that what you're, what you're kind of referring to? Um. Just conceptually, not anyone in particular, but the ease that anyone can kind of have a, have a knife I, manufacturer. I think, I think the ease is fabulous. Um, the motivation behind is another thing. So I, I know people here, um, here in Mexico, you know, that uh, 
that just uh, may, may copy uh, a well-known model of a well-known maker and just, uh, you know, go buy it or um, um, try, to, try to copy or imitate, you know, um, models that have more design, that have more research into them. So, mm -hmm. you know, um, again, that's why I, I talk about purpose. That's why I talk about motivation. And uh, because not everyone's motivation is the same. And uh, I know you, for example, you're, you're working on a collaboration with a knife maker. And I'm excited about that because you are a person that has uh, knowledge and that has good taste. And, and so when I look at the qualities that you have, and that the knife maker may have, and you put those together, together I always support collaborations. Two, two, two brains think better than one. Uh, yes. and so, um, in that sense, that's fantastic. And, and I support that. And I told you that I want one of your knives. <laughs> uh, after we're done rolling, I'll show it to you. <laughs> but then again, uh, you know, when, when the motivation is just easy money, and I can understand that, uh, that situation, I can absolutely understand trying to, to, to get some money to live. But when it's just that, well, then, you know, the value, um, the, the knife maker may set the price, but then again, the, the customer sets the value mm. or gives the value. I, I, I think when I say the ease uh, of production, uh, I've spoken to enough people to know that it's not easy. And I, I'm not suggesting that it's easy. What I, what I was really referring to uh, was the manufacturing aspect. The, the fact that um, once, once you've learned your CAD or once you find someone to do that for you, there are, there are machines and processes that are out of your hands, gratefully so, that can build those things. And they're doing beautiful jobs building them. What, that's what I meant by ease. You know, 20 years ago, it wasn't as easy for an American exactly. to design a knife and have it made like that. Uh, but but uh, you were talking about sort of the <clears throat> the Ernie Emersons and the and the Rick Hinderers and the <clears throat> Bob Terzuolas who have all of that experience, <clears throat> not only building knives, but innovating and kind of creating the genre to a, a great extent. And then you have a generation uh, or two that comes up behind them they benefit from that knowledge. It's like a young chess master reading all the games from the chess masters that came before him and absorbing, absorbing all of their toil um, and all of their innovation and creativity and putting it to their own purpose. Uh, the question is, do they offer the same thing to generations beyond them? Well, that's a good question to think about. I mean, um, you know, wisdom is is something that also it's it's transmitted generation to generation, um, and there are things that that technology cannot uh, cannot do. Um, and so that uh, that uh, sixth sense, that uh, that good taste, you know, a machine cannot sense good taste. Um, a machine cannot uh, decipher how uh, the geometries are going to play with light and shadow and how that is going to impact, impact the eye of, of uh, the beholder. That, that's something I love, about, I love about blades, geometries, light and shadow. Uh, that's a yin-yang, that's balance. Um, and that's something I, that's one of the, the things that I look in, look for in a blade as well. You know, it's kind of interesting is the, is the, uh, there's sort of a yin yang with a maker like Brian Nadeau. I mean, we're talking about, um, and this, this, this is not totally random. We're, we're talking about, uh, machine <clears throat> assisted made knives or, or machine made knives. And, uh, and he himself is a master <clears throat> at, using those CNC machines to make his own knives in his own facility, which is his house, uh, last I checked. But he also, to mass produce his knives, 
relies on a company that does the same thing. So he's he is like, uh, you know, he is a, a maestro with the machines that he's also having his things reproduced on, which I think is an interesting, um, uh, interesting scenario as opposed to someone who's been hand making them and then has the machines do it. He's been doing the same, uh, you know, he's doing the same on both sides. I think that's that's uh, smart. He's already acquired the the knowledge. He's already a mastered something. A master at, at it. At the same time, um, <laughs> he decides to go both ways. So you know, I, I understand the the aspect as a as a businessman, but at at the same time, I understand when he makes a custom, and, and you have seen his customs. They're just out of this world. Yeah, I, I'm not I'm not a dagger guy. But um, but his arch nemesis is <laughs> it's something incredible, something to behold, you know. Yes, yes, I do. Uh, I I have long called that the perfect folder. I mean, to me that, and I got a chance to heft one. Oh yeah, that's a beautiful knife. It, it's one of my favorites. This is in the the um, the collection, my personal collection. This is not for rotation. <laughs> And this is perfect. I mean, this is as I called, I, I named this darkness um, uh, because it, it just represents darkness so well in so many aspects. Look at the light, how, how it hits that flat and that. Uh, um, yeah, the yokote and that, and then the long hollow ground flat that or uh, straight. That is beautiful. Yeah. Uh, um, uh, so you just mentioned that that's part of your collection, not part of the rotation. Tell me a little bit about your channel and, and, and the nuts and bolts of it, how you, how you um, manage it. And, and I assume you have knives that you have just for review that you send through and then others that you cherish and hold on to. Tell me about your channel a little bit. Uh, um, it's well, it, it's evolving. I'm, I'm trying to, to, you know, keep it alive. And at the same time, it has become um, a, a source of income for me uh, as to, you know, if I wanted to keep on reviewing, I had to keep on bringing in knives. And so I buy them and uh, I, I make first impression videos on, on most 98, 99% of the knives. And, and perhaps I keep one um, and that's going to go into my permanent collection. Um, Perhaps um, I find something that uh, can I can play with it a little bit more, and that stays in the uh, in the rotation collection, which is more for the channel. And so, and for that, I have to keep on bringing knives, and uh, you know that led me to also to Jack Wolf, which uh, I don't know if you know, but uh, I became um, the the. Uh, the official, um, uh, what's it called? Dealer, Distrib Mexico, oh, distributor, the distributor for Latin America, and so you know what I, I had I had some idea of that because your videos, um, you know, I'm like, man, he's got them all. He's got each one. Is he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very nice, nicely done. And so, um, but you know, and people ask. Uh, uh, oh no, Ben is is just uh, giving you no. I have bought every single one of those knives, and if if Ben has decided to go um, to to work that way, that's perfect. Uh, I, I believe Ben is a very ethical person, yep. and uh, that's why I, I also decided to work with him because um, ethics are are a big part of my life, and. Um, um, we have had a, a few uh, uh, situations uh, here in Mexico, particularly, and uh, you know Ben has come come out clean through. And uh, you know another one of those things talking about ethics, loyalty is very important for, to me. And so you know um, that's uh, it's it's a pleasure to to be able to do business to work with a person that has those values as well. And, um, you know, the, the Jack Wolf collection is, it's, uh, it's fantastic. Mm -hmm. and, and yeah, I totally understand, you know, it, it has uh, costed me every single penny. 
and I enjoy it very much. Um, with the joy of the slip joint, is that something new to you? Or, I mean, did you grow up with the, with the pocket knives and then, you know, that graduate was, to the locking? That was the last, uh, the last folder, the last knife that I got in love with. Like I, like I mentioned, you know, the, the, um, uh, the evolution was axes, machetes, knife, uh, uh, fixed plates, All right. folders, and lastly, right. the slip joints. Uh, so you mentioned before, um, or you sort of indicated that maybe there were some difficulties uh, from time to time. What's it like in Mexico? Uh, what's the knife culture like in Mexico? And wh what's it like um, collecting the knives you, you like? Oof, it, it, well, it's if it's difficult for you guys over there to you know catch a drop, it's just so much more difficult here. Um, th through the payments, the this insecurity for the knife to actually arrive to your house, um, taxes of thirty-five to fifty percent extra. Mm. Um, and on top of that, if you go to the secondary market, well, you know the story. I, you know, I, I've been kind of uh, discriminated in that sense when I when I was trying to put together my my the, the Trinity, and uh, you know, people there's just uh, people different people, you know, with different ideas, and and that uh, they think that uh, you know, like they told me, well, what's a Mexican gonna do with a with a knife like this in their hand? And, uh, well, you know, it's, uh, it, it's just ignorance speaking. Of course, it's not nice, but you got to understand that uh, ignorance exists. Yeah, sure, sure. I thought the, uh, I thought the problem would be shipping it to Mexico because uh, I was about to ship a knife to Canada and the guy was just like, it was a giveaway knife. And the, and the gentleman I very remember. graciously said, hold on to it. Don't bother. Don't go through you know, I was going to go through it. There's, you got to tape it shut and tape the blade and do and tighten the pivot and, and then, you know, describe it and all this. And it's not that big a deal, but it's, you know, I wonder, I, I was thinking when you were seeking that Trinity, that it was more an issue of shipping, but, but it was, that is the most ignorant thing. Yeah. What's a, what's a Mexican going to do with a, well, what's an American going to do with a hinderer? What's, a, what's, what's, what's anyone going to do with a hinderer? Uh, I mean, um, uh, it's, you know, like I said, it's just difficult, but you got to understand, um, you know, we are all, all ignorant at some level. Uh, I'm not an encyclopedia. Well, there you, I'm going to sound old because I, I always repeat, I'm not an encyclopedia and I should be saying I'm not Google, you know, <laughs> and so... Hey. <laughs> You're, you're talking, you're talking to, yeah, you, you, no need for that. Uh, the, but the, uh, the knife culture, like in Mexico, um, I don't know much about it uh, or, or if there is one, uh, I, I know there's a Mexican style Bowie that I'd love to get a version of at some point. Um, but how, is there a community there that, that, uh, of like-minded folks like yourself or, or, or do you feel like an Island or, um, you know what, uh, it, it's sometimes I do feel like an island uh, with the community that I've, I've been able to form that's, uh, um, that's making that uh, disperse, that thought disperse. Uh, Mexico is some 15 years, 20 years behind uh, from my point of view. Um, there are good things, of course, uh, but there's also a lot of uh, envy and jealousy and things that we got to um, uh, overcome. And, you know, that's part of as well. That's part of my job, trying to um, trying to communicate, trying to share and trying to, you know, point out some directions without uh, you know, trying to be a, a know-it-all because I'm not. But uh, there are a few good people, humble people that, uh, you know, that, that have asked me and um, that are willing to, to, to try different things. And so um, in that sense, I've, I've also earned the, the, 
respect of a lot of people here. And in that sense, well, it, it's a slow road. It's a, um, but there's at the same time, there's no hurry. And we got to take into consideration that uh, we can all learn from this experience and, and also enjoy even more knives. Well, where do you want your channel to go ultimately what's the what's the end end goal um i'm close to opening a, a, a web page and you know i want to i want to write about knives and it, it's uh, I, the, the videos are still kind of hard for me you know it's it's been three years already or close to three years and it's it's just the thing that it's it's you know I don't feel like in the water and and just uh, oh everything is so easy no 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 <laughs> but I, I do like writing I've always uh, enjoyed writing um, th that artistic part of me you know um, I've uh, I used to write um, when I was since I was very young and then also paint, uh, painted. And so writing about knives and telling stories, that, that's, I, I just love storytelling. So I don't know, uh, that's something I'd, I'd like to do in my webpage. Of course, I'm going to offer uh, Jack Wolf knives, of course. Uh, and uh, the knives that go out in rotation uh, from the collection, uh, that's they go out uh, as well uh, for sale. Uh, I can't keep them all, as we all know. We can't keep them all. <laughs> I try. <laughs> we, we certainly try, but uh, uh, yeah, we gotta let go if if we wanna try something new. You know, I had to let go of what was it, six knives, seven knives, just to get a Jason Guthrie um, oh, Scout. Nice. Yeah, gorgeous, gorgeous knife. And then I had to let go of the cursory to get something else. I I like the idea of um, I I like this idea of not only having having a flow. I, I need to set up more of a flow through my um through my collection, um uh, but but having you ha you have to, you can let that flow with the with your washi. You can let that flow of the walkie sashi this way. Let it flow towards you. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I need, I need to establish more flow in my collection. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, I like I like the idea of having things move and keeping it fresh and not getting too attached. Uh, like in theoretically, uh, philosophically, I believe I should not be attached. I I kind of bristle at materialism, and yet, you know, I'm pretty I'm I'm pretty materialistic at least in this <laughs> realm of things. Uh, so, you know, there's gotta be a way to sort of, you know, justify and, and maintain. So I like this idea of bringing together passions, knives with this for me is a, is uh, a passion, Th this kind of production. Um, so bringing that together, the videos or, or, you know, so I know a lot of people become outdoorsmen through their love of knives. And uh, I could see that happening to me someday, someday. I got to do something with all these knives. I'm going to go out in the uh -huh. woods now, you know, now that I'm retired or whatever. But um, yeah, you know, so. Can be... Sorry. No, 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 please. It can become a, a path of personal development. Uh, I, and because you start catching different things about yourself, about mm -hmm. your personality. And, and so you're, you're, for example, you're, if, if you have a, 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 a personality, an obsessive, compulsive personality, and you didn't know about it, it well, you're going to know about it. Um, if, if you um, cringe, if you cringe to things, uh, if you cringe to people, you're going to learn through this that you're going to have to let go. And at the same time, you're going to be glad to let go sometimes because, you know, sometimes... Um, have to put a, a uh, in COVID, 70% uh, of the teachers here in Mexico in private schools were left unemployed. Oh. And uh, we were not able to go back to, to schools um, because also salaries went down dram dramatically, 50%, about 50%. And so, um, you know, uh, 
in that sense, we were left with you know, having to explore different options. So this is my option. And, you know, I've had to sell knives in order to, to pay the rent, in order to put a plate of food in my table. And uh, you know what? Uh, I remembered gratitude. And that's, uh, that's something that uh, also that we have forgotten and that's uh, magical. Uh, and I, I mean it in all the sense of the word, because uh, when you feel true gratitude, everything's okay, you know? You had to let, let go of something that, that you appreciated uh, in order to, to be alive. And at the same time, you're glad to be alive. And, uh, and you are thankful for that which gave you that food. So it, it's, a, it's a very interesting cycle. And, and, uh, and if, you, if you were cringing to something and you learned to let go, uh, you know, that's, that's a big step. And, and when you talk about spiritual uh, practices, the, the spiritual practices in, of letting go in different religions, that's something that is very important. Well, you talk about letting go and you talked about uh, how you still feel uncomfortable after three years um, or maybe not uncomfortable, but not not as uh, at home as you might have thought you would. But that right there is 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 opening you up and teaching you you know and 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 most likely we're getting the real professor edc um from that uh, so thank you for opening up to that um that's corny to say uh, this uh, <laughs> with with this with this with this uh sort of um interlude but i want to I want you to open up further. I have a speed round uh, as we wrap up the show. And uh, for those of you who are patrons, I'm going to, I have a couple of other questions I want to ask Professor EDC uh, during the exclusive interview section. Um, some things that, uh, some obvious low hanging fruit that I haven't gotten to, but uh, so do join us there. But I want to, I have some questions for you. Uh, I do a speed round uh, for people who have channels who review knives for whom many knives come through and your taste have, have developed and been refined so i want to find out more about you through this okay sure let's go all right it's about 16 questions fixed or folder right now folder <laughs> i like that right now that's the caveat for me too right now swords <laughs> you know okay <laughs> well it, it evolved you know so from yeah. axis now to folders where is it gonna go next i don't know I, yeah Today, no, last uh, yesterday I saw the first push dagger that I liked. I, mm -hmm. I have never liked push daggers, and I saw the first one. And I saw ah oh, that that's a good one. So now you have to get one for it for the Professor EDC Museum of Cutlery, <laughs> just to have an equal representation. <clears throat> okay, next up, flipper or thumb stud? Thumb stud. Washers or bearings? washers tip up or tip down uh tip up tanto or bowie Yeesh. <laughs> tanto hollow ground or flat ground hollow full size or small full size gentleman's knife or tactical knife I don't like the term tactical. Okay. Well, um, you know what I you know what I mean though. Yeah. Um hard to use tactical, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hard to use tactical. Okay, gotcha. Um automatic or bally song. Ew. Auto. Okay. Uh Benchmade or Spiderco? Spiderco. Chris Reeve or Hinderer? Treasury. Milled titanium or spring clip? Milled titanium. All right. Uh, carbon fiber or micarta? Tithe. No. <laughs> you must choose. Oh. You know what? I love Bark River's micarta. Lynn and Michael. Uh, so, yeah. Micarta. 
All right. So, yeah. So if you choose, say, if you chose carbon fiber, you could have all carbon fibers. If you choose my carta, you can have all carbon fibers. I, I'm giving you that. Uh, I, I, so my carta. Yeah, I'm with you on that. So uh, three more finger choil or no choil. Finger choil. Form or function. Mm. <gasps> oh my god you can say it go ahead it doesn't make you shallow if you say it <laughs> <laughs> you know what it, it's got it's gonna be function because <clears throat> that's the essence so, and, and, and i start with the essence the essence has to lead me to other things so function has to lead me to aesthetics and other things so function okay and lastly what's your grail knife what's your desert island knife you get one and you can have it the rest of your life what would that one be <clears throat> luckily no one's actually holding you to this but um a production custom let's bold. just say just say whatever whatever for me it might be that arch nemesis you mentioned oh <clears throat> what's that current obsession professor you got to have something well i'm i'm into the the fisher family definitely oh. I'm into the Fisher family. Thanks to Dirk Wording. Yep, yep. <laughs> Thank you, saying. Dirk, for watching this. No fault. You know. Um, but, um, oh, my God, that's that's so difficult. Uh, you got to choose in three seconds or you get nothing. No knife. You get a, you get a plastic butter knife from McDonald's. <laughs> Cold. That's just plain <laughs> You know what? Um, I'm going to go with a Chris Reed. You know, a Sabenza 21 full size, it's hard to beat. It is hard to beat. It's, whether you talk about the the Sun. Or the Uno you're, Sun, you're getting a lot of the things you mentioned. Thumb stud, washers, tip up, tanto, hollow ground. Yeah, I'm with you. 31 or the most recent one. Mm, beautiful but this is just a, a gorgeous blade shape it is and uh you know functional absolutely and like you said has all the things that i that you asked me and uh of course you know if we talk about custom i really have to think about that because there's so many oh yeah designers nick swan um um the russian um the south african uh th just too many just oh, to arnold or not, um just too many well luckily but you don't have to choose right now but thank you professor edc i really appreciate your coming on and revealing your uh your your taste here in the speed round uh it was, it's great to get to know you a little bit more and uh and i look forward to talking to you a little bit more in a few minutes but uh thanks again for coming on the show sir it is greatly appreciated thank you guys thank you jim i i, I love the work you guys do every thursday and and with every interview and uh i will continue to support you and watch you and, and keep on learning um so Thank you, guys, and, and thanks uh, f to the community that uh, I also appreciate very much um, uh, exchanging ideas, and and, and it, it's nice to be greeted in a, in a nice way and, and not with, uh, you know, the, the opposite. Yes, <laughs> agreed. All righty, sir, thanks. We'll talk to you soon. Thank you, Bob. Thank you, Jim. A pleasure. There he goes, ladies and gentlemen, uh, Professor EDC. I'm going to be talking to him again, like I said, in the uh, patrons um, patrons interview. Uh, great talk of purpose. I, I that's kind of an an, uh, an 
a through line through all of his videos. Uh, so do go check him out. Again, that's Professor EDC. Uh, good to have you here, sir. And be sure to join us for uh, another great interview next Sunday, not to mention the Wednesday Supplemental and Thursday Night Knives. Also, I've been posting a lot of videos. Check those out too. All right, for Jim, working his magic behind the switcher, I'm Bob DeMarco saying until next time, don't take dull for an answer. Thanks for listening to the Knife Junkie Podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please rate and review at reviewthepodcast.com. For show notes for today's episode, additional resources, and to listen to past episodes, visit our website, theknifejunkie.com. You can also watch our latest videos on YouTube at theknifejunkie.com slash YouTube. Check out some great knife photos on theknifejunkie.com slash Instagram, and join our Facebook group at theknifejunkie.com slash Facebook. And if you have a question or comment, email them to Bob at theknifejunkie.com or call our 24-7 listener line at 724-466-4487, and you may hear Hear your comment or question answered on an upcoming episode of the Knife Junkie Podcast.